In this module, we are going to look at cost accounting systems. Now, we begin with this module with the traditional cost accounting systems known as job costing and process costing. In the next module, we will introduce the more contemporary way we do cost accounting, which is called activity-based costing. So to begin with, in this module, we want to after studying this module, explain the purpose of cost accounting, describe how a job order costing system flows with the costs through the accounting system. We're going to look at how we maintain a job costing system. And then we're going to look at the problems of predetermined overhead and how we apply that to the products we produce. Now, to begin with, cost accounting in general involves measuring, recording, and reporting product costs. Now these costs are not separate, they're integrated into our general ledger accounting system. Now because cost accounting is a perpetual inventory system, that means our records are always up to date. Now, In this module we are going to look at cost accounting systems. Now we begin with this module with the traditional cost accounting systems known as job costing and process costing. In the next module, we will introduce the more contemporary way we do cost accounting, which is called activity-based costing. So to begin with, in this module, we want to after studying this module, explain the purpose of cost accounting, describe how a job order costing system flows with the costs through the accounting system. We're going to look at how we maintain a job costing system. And then we're going to look at the problems of predetermined overhead and how we apply that to the products we produce. Now, to begin with, cost accounting in general involves measuring, recording, and reporting product costs. Now these costs are not separate, they're integrated into our general ledger accounting system. Now because cost accounting is a perpetual inventory system, that means our records are always up to date. Now when we talk about cost accounting system, there are two basic extremes, one called the job order costing system, and the other called a process costing system. Now, it depends on the type of uh, manufacturing activity that is going on. Some companies have both systems working at the same time. But we're going to feature the job order costing system. Now, it's called job order because what we're doing is assigning costs to each job. And the key features of a job is that it each job is different. That is, it takes different amount of material, different amount of labor, and therefore should pick up a different amount of manufacturing overhead. Compute, remember, direct material is material that is direct and can be measured and traced to the product. Direct labor can be measured. So those two are actual. But manufacturing overhead has to be assigned. Now, a job order costing system, let's take a printer for example. One job would be uh, printing wedding invitations and number of envelopes and different typeset, different colors, what have you. So it'd see it would take different amount of material, different amount of labor, and different machining, as opposed to the next job, which might be a menu for a local restaurant. Each job is given a unique number, and we're going to trace the costs to each one of those jobs. So we trace the cost to the job in a job order costing system. Now we want to contrast that to a process costing system. A process costing system is a system that is used when we produce a, a large number of similar products. Think of a Coca-Cola plant. They produce cans of Coke. Each Coke has exactly the same amount of material, the same amount of labor was used and the same amount of manufacturing overhead. So in this case, what we do is we trace the cost to the process. And because the output of the process is exactly the same, we simply divide 
the total cost of the process by the output. Now this kind of system is good when we're talking oil, you see large amount of the same. Benzene, benzene made into pellets, made into DVDs. These would all be process costing system. Now we trace the cost to the system. In this module though, we're gonna focus on job costing. Now, job costing, we're going to look at the physical flow that can, that goes through the process as we convert raw material to finished goods. We have three inventories here, raw material inventory, work and process inventory, and finished goods. So you can see the materials then would be put into production. Everything that's put into production, material, labor, and overhead is a debit to work and process. Now, when the job is finished, we credit work in process and we debit finished goods. And when we sell the good, we credit finished goods and we debit cost of goods sold. So that's how the costs flow through the process. Now, how do we keep track of these costs? We use a job order cost sheet. And it looks simply like this. We put the job number, item, quantity, date required, and this job sheet goes with the job. So somebody will requisition some direct materials and it would go on this material sheet. Then they would keep track of the labor and then the accountant will assign the overhead when the job is finished and we get the total cost down here of the completed job. Now, to begin with, we start with raw materials. The process starts when somebody requisitions some raw material. For producing a desk, they would requisition um, materials like uh, wood and uh, laminate and metal, and they would sign for these. So there's your material requisition slip, and that was what was taken out. Now this goes into production. It goes into the work and process if it's a direct material. If it's indirect material like glue or something like that, it would go into manufacturing overhead. And that's what the accountant would do. Debit either work and pro well, debit work and process for the direct materials, debit manufacturing overhead for the indirect materials. Now, they would then be assigned to different jobs. Job 101, 102, 103. The 24,000 would be uh, consumed by those three jobs. Now, the same thing with a labor ticket. Everybody keeps track of their time on the shop floor. We know what their hourly rate is. We know what their cost. And so therefore, we would put the direct labor into work and process, the indirect labor into manufacturing overhead. And that's how it would look.
Now the manufacturing overhead costs are assigned, and that's what we're going to talk about later. How do we assign that? Well, we use a predetermined overhead rate, but it's the accountant that does that. Now this predetermined overhead rate is an estimate. It estimate is done at the beginning of the year. What we do is we estimate what we think the total indirect manufacturing costs would be. That's rent and heat, and electricity and AC, everything. And then we select an activity base to which we're going to directly assign those costs to the product. And the three main bases are direct labor costs, direct labor hours, or machine hours. Now a business, depending on the type of manufacturing company it is, if it's a labor intensive production process, then they would use direct labor uh, hours or direct labor costs. If it's a, a capital intensive company, then they would use machine hours most likely. But they would estimate these again at the beginning of the year. So the predetermined overhead rate is an estimated annual overhead cost over the estimated annual operating activity. So it's established at the beginning of the year. They can use either a single or a company-wide determinant rate. We can have different ones for different departments, but basically the formula is this. Estimated annual overhead costs divided by estimated annual operating activity, and that gives us a predetermined overhead rate, which we apply to production based on the actual consumption of the activity base. So here's how we go. Actual activity base use times the overhead rate, and that's how we assign it to the jobs. So best with an example here. Wallace uses a direct labor cost as the activity base. So there's your activity base, direct labor costs. They expect the annual overhead budget to be 280 and the annual direct labor cost for the year to be 350. So therefore, for every dollar of labor costs incurred, they're going to assign 80 cents to cover the overhead. And that's how they assign it. So they keep track of the actual labor dollars that go into the production of a product, and then they multiply that by 0.8 to assign the manufacturing overhead to it. And therefore, if we spent 28000 in direct labor costs, then we would allocate 22400 manufacturing overhead to the production. And there's your journal entry. And that's how it would flow through. Okay, now at the end of the month or the end of the year, we look at the balance, in the work and process, and we make sure that the total in the work and process T account adds up to all the jobs that are on the shop floor. And then we have the total amount, and you see here direct labor up to that date, we assigned 80% to manufacturing overhead. At the completion of the job, it was 15,000 direct labor. We assigned 80% of 15,000 or 12,000. Now there were 39,000 units made. So no, it was a thousand units. So it's $39 per unit. And there's a summary of your job order cost flows.
So you study those PowerPoints. Now, one more thing. As I incurred manufacturing overhead, I debited manufacturing overhead, the actual amount. But when I applied the to the jobs, I credited manufacturing overhead. So at the end of the year, I either have more actual than I had applied or more applied than I had actual. It's not likely that I would be right on. So I must determine if I was under applied or over applied. And when, if I'm under applied, that means the cost of goods sold is too low. So I must debit it. If I over apply, that means the cost of goods sold is too high. So I must credit it. Here's a quick illustration, manufacturing overhead, cost of goods sold.